our story begins with Simon the Shoemaker. Simon owned neither house nor land. He lived with his wife, Matrina, and their two small children. They could only afford a peasant's hut. Work was cheap, and bread was dear. What he earned, he spent for food. sheepskin coat between them, and it was in tatters. They had been saving to buy a new one. I'm going into town, Matrena. I want to collect the five rubles that are owed me. Three from Ivan and two from Giorgio. With the three we've saved, I'll have enough to buy some sheepskins for a new winter coat. doesn't let the shopkeepers in the village cheat him. Dmitri Kudel. Simon, how are you? I can't collect the five rubles that are owed me. Uh, these are hard times. Uh, Dmitri, I need sheepskins for a new coat. I have three rubles and twenty kopecks now, and I pay the rest uh, when... Simon, bring your money. Then you can take your pick of the skins. Hmm. You know how hard it is to collect money these days. Here, friend. These boots need soles. Repair them, and I'll pay you promptly. Yeah. I have no sheepskins, but what do I care? <laughs> My wife will fret, but we can live through another winter without a new coat. Shame I can't collect. He says he doesn't have it. But he has a house and cattle. I only have the clothes on my bed. I must spend three rubles a week for bread. Oh, Simon, when will you learn to be firm? Give me what you owe and no nonsense about it. for talking here, and here, put this on at once. Now, 
move about and try to get warm. It's too cold to stand here. You'd better come home with me. Has someone been treating you badly? No. But God is punishing me. Yes, yes. God rules all. I go out for sheepskins and come home with a stranger? The trainer won't be pleased. should make some bread. There's still a large piece left. Maybe we can make it last till tomorrow. Uh, I only have enough flour for one more batch. Oh, I hope he didn't let the dealer cheat him. Eight rubles should buy some good skins. Last winter, with only one old coat. Oh, oh no! Oh, he's been drinking, and instead of sheepskins, he has brought some good for me to have with him. Uh, come in, young man, and get warm. Have you uh, cooked anything for us, Madrena? I have cooked, but not for you. You go out to buy sheepskins and come home with a stranger. That's enough, Madrena. Don't wag your tongue without reason. Hmm. And what have you done with the money? Here is the money. Ivan promises to pay soon. Hmm. Now, give me my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so, where did you... So... Where did you find him? Matrena, that's what I'm trying to tell you. He was behind the shrine, naked and frozen. What, what was I to do? I clothed him and brought him home. Oh, don't be so angry, Matrena. It is a sin. Remember, we must all die one day. <laughs> Matrena. Better have something to eat. <laughs> Take your place, young man. Where are you from? I am not from these parts. Did someone rob you? No. God is teaching me a lesson. And you were lying there, naked? Yes, naked and freezing. Simon saw me and had pity on me. He gave me his coat. He gave me boots to wear and took me home. You have fed me and given me drink and shown pity on me. God will reward you. Put these on and lie down where it's warm. You ate the last of the bread, and I have not put any to rise. I don't know what we will do tomorrow. Simon. Well. He seems like a good man. Why does he not tell us who he is? Well, we give, but nobody gives to us. Go to sleep. Well, friend, 
one has to work for a living. What do you do? I don't know anything. A man who wants to learn can learn. Men work, and I will work also. Oh. What is your name? My name is Michael. Michael. Oh. Well, Michael, you have to earn a living for yourself. If you're willing to learn, I'll give you food and shelter. May God reward you. Show me what to do and I will learn. Simon showed Michael, he understood at once. He worked hard and ate little. He hardly ever went out of the house and spoke only when necessary. They never saw him smile except that first evening when Matrina gave him supper. It's all you. Master Putnika. Uh, I am, Your Excellency. Sergei. Your Excellency, yes. What sort of leather is it? Huh? Oh, a very good leather, sir. No, Shumika. Not very good leather. Roman leather! Oh. Wouldn't it cost 20 rubles? <laughs> Where would I ever see such leather? Exactly. <laughs> so. Can you make it into boots for me? Uh, um, uh, yes, yes, I can, Your Excellency. You can, huh? I want boots that will last a year, that will not lose their shape, uh, yes. that will not come undone. Uh, yes, yes. If they do lose their shape or come loose, I promise you will pay dearly for it. <laughs> uh, 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 mm. uh, uh, I'll, I'll take the work. Uh, then I confess. <laughs> Tight in the leg. Yes. What are you grinning at, Dunkov? You better look to it that the boots are ready in time. They shall be ready in good time. Never mind, it is so. <laughs> him with a mallet. He almost knocked down the door, but he hardly felt it. <laughs> Death himself cannot touch such a rock. 
We have taken the work, but uh, we better do it right and not make mistakes, huh? Uh, Michael, your eye is truer than mine. Uh, take this measure and uh, cut out the boots. mistake. And now the gentleman orders boots and you make soft slippers. Oh, you wasted the leather. I, I could never replace it. What are you doing, friend? This is going to ruin me. Good day again, friends. Uh, oh, good day. Uh, what can we do for you now? My mistress has sent me about the boots. So, what about the boots? My master has no need of them. He is dead. What? It is not possible. He did not live to get home. He died in the carriage. My mistress says the master no longer needs the boots. Instead, you must quickly make soft slippers for the corpse. I am to wait here until they are finished. Here you are. <gasps> Thank you, kind sirs. As the years went by, Michael continued to live and work with Simon. Michael was a fine shoemaker, and people from all over the district brought their boots for repair. These two little girls need shoes for this spring. Hmm, we can do that. We have never made such small shoes. But my man Michael here, he is a master at the work. Oh, uh, take the measure of this little one first. Uh, she will need a special fit for her lame foot. Oh, how did she come to be lame? Was she born so? No. Her mother accidentally rolled over on her at birth. Oh. Then you are not the mother? No, my good woman. I am not even related to them. Oh, they were strangers to me when I adopted them. Even though they are not your children, you seem to love them very much. Oh, how could I not be fond of them? I fed them both at my breast. Then uh, whose children are they? About six years ago, their parents died. The, the father, a, a woodcutter, got caught under a falling tree and was killed instantly. That same week, his wife gave birth to twins. When I went to visit her, I found her dead and lying on one of them. The village folk asked me to nurse the two babies since I was nursing my own infant, just eight weeks old. By the end of the first year, my only child died, and I had no more. <laughs> oh, how lonely I should be without these little ones. They are the joy of my life. <laughs> the proverb is true. One may live without father or mother, 
but one cannot live without God. Farewell, Master. I have learned what God has sent me to learn. I ask your forgiveness for anything I have done wrong. I see, Michael, that you are no ordinary man. I can neither keep you nor question you. But tell me this. When I found you and brought you home, you were gloomy. But when my wife gave you food, you smiled and became brighter. And when the gentleman came to order boots, you smiled again and became brighter still. And when the lady came with the two little girls, you smiled at their time and became as bright as day. Tell me, Michael, why does your face shine so each time you smile? Light shines from me because God forgives me. And I smile because I have learned a new truth. I don't understand, Michael. I was an angel in heaven sent to fetch the soul of the woman who had just given birth to twins. husband has just been killed. There is no one to care for my babies. Spare me. Do not take my soul. So I flew back to heaven and pleaded that children can't live without mother or father. But God told me to go back to take her soul and learn three lessons. softened and brought me food. It was then I learned my first lesson. Love dwells in people. A year later, a gentleman came in to order boots that was last a year. I saw my comrade and I knew that he had come for the man's soul. And I learned the second lesson. It is not given to us to know our own needs. But I still did not know the final lesson. Do we live by? Then the lady came and I learned how the two babes were kept alive. I had believed the mother when she said that her children would die without father or mother. Now I know we live by. We live by love for one another. <laughs> 